Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for today, October 1st, 2012. Check out the YouTube's description. All the headlines and links are posted in there. In this video, we'll be able to get to eugenics, the economy, maybe some immigration news. The first article I have for you is about fluoride. Uh, it says here, yet more studies link fluoride to brain damage from September 27th from Natural News. Science continues to provide more evidence that fluoride, which is added to most public drinking water systems in the U.S. as a way to fight tooth decay, causes more harm than good. The Fluoride Action Network said in a press release that a newly discovered and translated study, I believe it's Harvard, found that fluoride is linked to lower IQ and even at ranges added to U.S. water supplies. Moreover, the group said that the fluoridation promoters misrepresented data from a recent Harvard fluoride IQ study. In all, the Fluoride Action Network said 34 studies now link fluoride to lower IQ levels in humans, while scores of other studies correlate fluoride to learning and memory impairment, fetal brain damage, altered neurobehavioral function, and altered thyroid uh, hormone levels. So legislators who mandate fluoridation without carefully considering this research are doing a profound and disservice to the health and welfare of their constituents, attorney Michael Conant of Fluoride Action Network said. Harvard researchers are concluding that uh, recently that the chemicals effect on children's developing brains should be a high research uh, priority, especially in the U.S., which they concluded has never investigated the effects of fluoride on the brain. Advocates of fluoridation, however, misrepresented the research, claiming that the Harvard study found that only one half point difference in IQ and that the fluoride levels were much higher than Americans normally encounter. The Fluoride Action Network says the Harvard team found that fluoride exposure was associated with statistically significant reductions of seven IQ points. It says here, far more than a half a point drop claimed by one advocate. Yeah, so the article goes on and talks about what's the right thing for the governments to do. Well, it's to not force Medicaid its constituents. Modern wheat, a perfect chronic poison, doctor says. This is actually from CBS this morning. Kind of surprised to find this. But this is from September 3rd, 2012. So this kind of went under the radar, I think. It just came came through the uh, little news cycles in the alternative news world recently. CBS says, modern wheat is a perfect chronic poison, according to the Dr. William Davis, a cardiologist who has published a book about the world's most popular grain. He said that the wheat that we eat these days isn't what your grandmother had. It's an 18-inch tall plant created by genetic research in the 60s and 70s, he said. This thing has many new features nobody told you about, such as there's a new protein called this, uh, what is it, gladin? It's not gluten. I'm not addressing people with gluten sensitivities. I'm talking about everybody else because everybody else is susceptible to the uh, gladin protein that is an opiate. The thing he says this thing binds onto the opiate receptors in your brain and in most people stimulates appetite such that we consume 440 more calories per day, 365 days per year. Asked that the farming industry could change back to the grain it formerly produced, just like everything else, right? Saying it would not be economically feasible because it yields less per acre. However, he said a movement has begun with people turning away from wheat and dropping substantial weight. Something that uh, most of you are aware of, Russia halted its imports of Monsanto corn over cancer fears. So the Russian authorities temporarily suspended the import and sale of Monsanto's genetically modified corn after a study suggests it may be linked to cancer. I think they did it with the wheat, too. But the uh, United States downplayed the move, saying that, well, they're usually a big exporter of wheat, not an importer, so it's not that big of a deal. But it may be a big deal, because now South Africans are calling for immediate ban on GM maize after shocking cancer study. In GMO technology news, there's this uh, glyphosate toxicity leaving men sterile says, what if the pesticides and herbicides being sprayed on your food was causing your sperm to die? What if GMO crops had the same effect? What would it mean for humanity? One study in particular found that this ingredient in Roundup leaves a residue on crops. This residue is actually toxic to testicle cells. It says, also, the residue lowers testosterone synthesis. This means the glyphosate toxicity lowers the amount of male sex hormone available for the body to use. It says, some people have been... Uh, known to develop breasts, have a variety of birth defects, and have been known to experience carcinogenic effects as well. It says they're also becoming uh, sterile over time. Given that rate of consumption, they will likely be completely sterile within a decade. Another study out of Russia found that hamsters who consume GM, genetically modified soybeans, have a, have a slower sexual maturity process, and in few generations, they weren't able to reproduce. 
Claim benefits of genetically modified mosquitoes have been disproven by Cayman trial results. 2010, when the British biotechnology company Oxitec came up with the brilliant idea of releasing thousands of GM mosquitoes in the wild, we were all told that uh, doing so would help combat genetic fever, but nearly two years later, this trial has ended, which was launched unannounced in the Cayman Islands without public knowledge, has been shown to be a complete failure. Turns out they cannot effectively stamp out the fever and may even make the condition worse, which is what most of us probably already figured. But we're all lab rats here, so I'm uh, glad they were happy to participate in the in the study there down in the Cayman Islands. Scientists moved to create genetically modified camels for pharmaceutical genetically modified milk. We've heard about cows producing uh, milk for human consumption, breast milk, right? Genetically modified. Then it says here, so... The, according to the Science and Development Network, the camels will be used to make genetically modified milk, which will then be processed into cheaper drugs. Then check this link out. I'm going to keep moving for time's sake. I'll just go through it briefly. Corn now and then. If you've ever creeped your way through a corn maze at Halloween, you know that it can grab a hold of your imagination, turning benign stalks into monsters and discarded cobs into several limbs. It's just a trick of light, but uh, it goes on and says, take a look at the ways that the U.S. corn or the U.S. uses corn, you'll see that a holiday thrill isn't the scariest thing about the product. It was first subsidized in the late 70s as a fossil fuel alternative, but it's turned out to be an inefficient source of fuel. Not only that, ethanol from corn actually increases the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Going down to this, it says, every time you eat a pound of corn products, which statistics say you will do 37 times over this year alone. Remember this graphic, which was created so that you can learn stuff about the effects of corn, the America's biggest agricultural product. Remember I said it's just the biggest scam and waste. So in 1979, the U.S. government began to subsidize corn in search of alternative fuels. It goes on and says that the U.S. spends between 10 and $30 billion to subsidize farmers each year. Since 1995, corn has received more subsidies than wheat, soybeans, and rice combined. 2005, Congress required that ethanol be added to your gas tank, and U.S. corn prices have tripled. Also, now corn is found in three out of four supermarket products. I don't know why you'd even uh, eat half of this stuff, including a chicken... McNugget, a typical chicken nugget, has about 37 ingredients. 30 of them come from corn. Since the introduction of high fructose corn syrup, obesity rates have tripled. 1970, it was 15.9 pounds, the average American high fructose corn syrup consumption per year. Then in 2012, 42 pounds. So in one week, the average American will consume 12 ounces of high fructose corn syrup, equivalent to 21 donuts. So... I remember that it has uh, something to do with mercury. It's a derivative, and uh, that's not good for your brain as well as a fluoride. But you're being constantly attacked and bombarded, and you gotta you got to keep your eye on those ingredients. Um, you can get away with some things that aren't organic, but uh, you'll see them s uh, sneaking stuff in there all the time. Yeah, so here we go. A long-term diet of high fructose corn syrup alters your brain's ability to learn and remember information and causes abnormal increase in body fat, especially in the stomach area. Since the 1970s, diabetes incidences have increased sevenfold. And why? Soda companies continue using it because it's 20% cheaper than sugar because of the way the government handles the importing of sugar and the dealing with the sugar market and taxes and tariffs and all that. And governments are failing to act on a pesticide threat to honeybee pollinators. It goes on and says they're questioning why governments aren't doing more to protect the honeybee pollinators from a pesticide that is dramatically thinning the numbers of queen bees in many hives. It says there's a strong link in research between pesticides and dramatic decline in the numbers of honeybees in the U.S. and U.K. to the tune of about 50% in the last 25 years alone. The loss is pose a threat to food supplies as bees pollinate a third of the food which we uh, consume as tomatoes, beans, apples, and strawberries. Another scam is what? Is the uh, uh, criminalization of marijuana. Gotta have your marijuana stamp, right? Well, celebrate everybody. It's been 75 years since that scam started. Uh, federal cannabis prohibition turns 75 years old today in a milestone that will no doubt go largely unnoticed by the mainstream media. Started on October 1st, 1937, when the criminally outlawed the possession and cultivation of cannabis, setting into motion a public policy that results in 850,000 arrests per year. It led to more than 20 million arrests since 1965. So that's why I said I don't think they'll ever legalize it. They make so much money off incarcerations, arrests, 
court fees and ha forking over thousands of dollars to them, as far as that argument goes, is legalize it and tax the hell out of it. it. Says things are changing now. The majority of Americans say that they are in favor of replacing this failed policy with one of cannabis legalization and, see, regulation. I'm not for all that. Uh, it says here, further on November 6th, voters in three states, Colorado, Oregon, and Washington, will decide at the ballot box whether to allow limited legalization of cannabis for adults. They did the same thing with hemp as well. Um, right now, you know, you can't grow hemp here. You have to import it. So just like sugar thing, sugar scam. Court won't hear appeal over TSA scanners. The Supreme Court is supposed to protect your rights, right? Won't hear a Florida man's attempt to challenge the use of full-body scanners at airports that refuse to hear an appeal by this Mr. Corbett who wanted to challenge the TSA's use of these body scanners they rejected it on the grounds that they say it needed to be filed with a federal appeals court in Washington, D.C. So, yeah, good luck with that, buddy. U.S. is so ass-backwards. But then other places like the EU, they're ass-backwards, too. So, EU bans full-body airport scanners over their safety concerns, so why are they still allowed in the U.S.? So, they have good things, but then at the same time, they have other things that they're doing as well. So, you know, that, that saying of... Uh, capitalism and communism are two sides of the same coin well the people that created that coin are the powers that be and then they, they create the two parties too so if you get something from the left then inevitably you're going to get screwed by the right and you're going to get screwed by the left right left right just like the eu and the u.s one may not one thing may not get passed over there like you know uh, as far as stuff like this goes and police state and that but then it'll happen in the u.s what happens in the u.s and it goes it goes like with new york too and what happens in New York usually happens in the West Coast. What happens in the West Coast will spread to the, through the Midwest. And if one doesn't happen, it'll eventually happen in the other place. So, and I guess what I'm saying is, in the end, you get screwed anyways. But it's that illusion that, uh, you know, that there's some big difference. Free community food garden removed by City of Toronto workers. Without any advance notice, under the orders of the City of Toronto Parks District, Workers removed all live plants and food from the five-month-old People's Peas Garden in the Queen's Park on Friday. So the garden, the Occupy Gardens, began planting on May 1st under the watchful eye of the police. They said they knew it was here and left it undisturbed for almost five months. And then, get this, it says, uh, Kearney Moreland said the Occupy Gardens had erected a sign with their contact information. Then the city workers removed the sign, told a friend who was there that they're keeping the sign for legal purposes in case they wanted to press charges or something like that. But on Friday, the Global Mail reported that Ubin said the city did not touch base with the organizers of the garden because they had no contact information for the group. So these are the little fuck-fuck games, as I like to call it, that they play. Followed by the inevitable Toronto Parks Director douchebag Ubin said the garden was removed because it was planted illegally, a legal, a legal garden, see? And private property, and you own the earth. You own the earth. You're going to take the fucking earth with you to the spirit world. Again, good luck with that. I'll see you in the spirit world. I won't have anything physical or materialistic with me. But you can take your big, large acres of land and um, your little GMO gardens and and farms and stuff like that. And you can take it with you and take all your millions of gold and your digital currency with you. And you can rot in hell, right? Baby boomers' health is very poor and getting worse while the eugenics is taking hold then, right? Baby boomer generation's overall health has been on a sharp decline. Australian researchers said, it says here that the generation born between the end of the Second World War and mid-60s has double the rate of obesity than their parents at the same age. And boomers with three or more chronic conditions was 700% greater than the previous generation. Wow. So what does it mean? Well, it means more coercion, more for force, right? So what is there? What is there? What is there uh, going to be their solution? Well, the study says the findings were alarming and evidence that new public policies were needed. So more government, because you know, if they would have just had sugar, they wouldn't have high fructose corn, corn syrup. If they didn't have subsidizing all that corn, we might be a little bit healthier. If they didn't subsidize and allow all this uh, genetically modified wheat to be in there, we may actually be less fat lighter like that study said but this is the real thing right boomers built and will drain social security surplus as if there really is one social security was there to uh, was in, was enacted uh, to pay off the bankruptcy to the federal reserve system right that's what that's what they're doing so they're paying off the debt and uh it has nothing to do about social security benefits that's just part of the goodies that will eventually get taken away well the problem is is they need to die off but until they die, they want them to work until they fucking drop, until they're 80, whatever years old. Work harder, longer, for less. That's the mod. That's the mod. Nurse makes a heartfelt apology after 
Uh, they forced her to trick disabled people out of their benefits. Thousands of people with terminal illnesses were fit for work. Thank you.